This is your WCIA3 forecast first. Sponsored by Natex Heating, Cooling, Plumbing, and Electrical. Well, we've been watching our camera here in Decatur, Flooring America Carriage Crossing camera, that is. A little lightning showing up with a thunderstorm that has put on quite the show out there here this evening. We kind of zoom into that area that stretches from now east of Springfield, Iliopolis, and then we've been watching other cells that are over here into portions of uh, Iroquois County and near Wellington and Hoopston, and the storm that really has put on that light show right here again north of Decatur, Forsyth, Maroa. These storms are sub-severe, so no severe weather here. Good rain, good lightning, temperatures quite warm into low 70s tomorrow. Rain early on, but clearing later in the day. A little cooler, finally some relief from the heat and humidity. We'll talk about that and what part of the weekend looks to be really wet. Coming up, WCI3 News starts right now. Now from WCIA3 News. A shooting last week killed one person and hurt four others at a funeral luncheon. Now it has some funeral directors thinking twice about safety. Plus, police released dash camera footage of an officer being shot at last month. What happened during the ensuing chase? And it's never too late to go back to school. How this new graduate proved it. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 10. I've always got in touch with law enforcement um, that we can at least let them know the timelines to let them know uh, when we're doing service. That's what one funeral home does and others are considering after shootings across central Illinois. Good evening, I'm Jessica Coons. There was a deadly shooting at a funeral luncheon in Champaign last week. It happened outside of an American Legion, but some funeral homes are taking all of this into consideration and working with police. WCI3's Bryce Beeman joins us. So Bryce, what did funeral homes have to say? I spoke with two funeral homes in Champaign. One place says they have not needed to have any extra security and one who says he's feeling the impact of gun violence firsthand. These guys are, are they don't they don't understand the process of grieving. And so the way to grieve is retaliation. After a shooting at a funeral luncheon in Champaign last week, funeral homes are on edge. My first duty is to protect our staff, right? Um, and then the, the second priority is to protect the families. Sean Williams is a funeral home director. He says he works hand in hand with the police to provide safety for funeral services. We, we've needed a lot more law enforcement. You know, unfortunately, we, we're, we're stressing them out a little bit, but, um, but the main thing is protecting citizens. Meanwhile, other funeral homes in Champaign are feeling the impact from the shooting. I've thought about it, but I haven't, like I said, I haven't done anything about it. And there's, it's always an underlying concern. It's becoming more and more prevalent. But for Williams, the violence hits home for him. A lot of the guys that's, that's, um, that's being affected by gun violence and, and dying are some of the kids that grew up in my shop. And so, uh, unfortunately, now they're at the funeral home. Williams also used to own a barber shop in Champaign, where people went to as a safe haven. I mean, I almost cried every funeral because of, of just the relationships that I've had built up over the years with these uh, families. He hopes the community can come together to end the violence. I wish that uh, the, the, the blue side, along with the African-American side, along with the rest of the citizens of Champaign, could come together and really do a walk as one and walk and show that the rest of the world that this is how you combat gun violence is by coming together. So he can quit seeing kids he saw grow up in his shop in a casket. I've known these young kids since, since, since their purity. And now to see them on a cold embalming table is heart-wrenching. Williams also said that funerals can cost about $10,000. He told me he has to adjust prices to help some families out, especially when they don't have money set aside for an unexpected death. Jessica. All right, Bryce, thank you so much. One group will be praying throughout Champaign-Urbana for the rest of this month. Tonight, they gathered at Douglas Park. Corner Prayer has been doing this for seven years, but tonight the prayer was a bit different because violence in the community was a big focus. Violence happened, and so that has prompted us to really focus on peace in our communities. Um, and so, yeah, that's our focus today is that we're praying for peace. The group will be doing this again next Wednesday. They are meeting at the Salt and Light parking lot in Urbana. In Indiana, officials have identified the Terre Haute police officer who was ambushed, shot and killed at a federal building. It happened this afternoon. Detective Greg Ferency was a 30 year veteran of the department. The suspect is in custody and was in surgery as of this afternoon. 
We have an update from last month. The Decatur Police Department released footage from the night an officer was shot at in a parking lot. That was followed by a chase with the suspect and more shots fired. WCI3's Jared Farmer is here. Jared, can you break down what we're seeing there? Jessica, the footage follows the time when Marcus Boykin first pulled into the parking lot where Officer Chris Snyder was sitting and follows all the way to the ensuing chase and shootout. And as we can see here, Boykin drives by and you can't see the shots fired at the squad car from this angle, but you can briefly see Boykin sticking out his head as he circles around the car. Then a minute as you just saw, you saw uh, Officer Snyder firing back through his windows and throughout the chase you can see Boykin flashing his gun through the back seat and that chase would continue for a few more minutes until Boykin was finally stopped near the corner of Grand Avenue and MLK Drive. None of the officers involved nor Boykin were hit in the shootout. Decatur police say this is still an ongoing investigation and to give them a call if you know any more information. If you would like to see the video cam footage for yourself, we have that up on our website, WCIA.com. All right, Back Jared. Thank you for that report. Decatur's police chief, Jim Getz, announced he would be retiring at the end of the month. He's been the city's police chief for the last five years, but has been with the department since 1999. Decatur's mayor spoke to us about the retirement, and she thanked Getz for the work he's done to build relationships with the community and says the next chief will have big shoes to fill. Really, he set the tone. Um, for high expectations for the people on his staff. Um, he had a great sense of calm and um, his integrity was incredible, is incredible and people trust him. In a statement, Chief Getz thanked the community for their support and says he's been humbled for having the opportunity to lead Decatur's police department. We have an update on a shooting on I-74 in Urbana. State police say the gunfire came from a vehicle driving eastbound near Lincoln Avenue. This happened yesterday afternoon. Police say a 22-year-old man from Rantoul was hit. That victim walked into the hospital and is expected to survive. Police are still investigating. And an update on another shooting, this one in Spring Springfield. One person was shot after a fight broke out on Saturday at White Oaks Mall. Police today say they believe it's gang related and they are working to identify everyone involved. It's not every day the president comes to town, but today Illinois hosted President Biden at a community college about an hour outside of Chicago. Our Capitol Bureau Chief Mark Maxwell was on the tarmac when Air Force One touched down. I know that's a boring speech, but it's an important speech. President Biden acknowledged some of his ideas may not demand your undivided attention, but he says they will deliver undeniable results. We should invest more in research and development than any country in the world. With a deal on infrastructure nearly done in Washington, Biden forged ahead to a second chapter of his agenda. What I want to talk about today is human infrastructure. Expanding access and affordability to education. That's why I want to guarantee an additional four years of public education for every person in America, starting with providing two years of universal high-quality preschool for three- and four-year-olds, building, <laughs> building on what the governor has been doing here in Illinois. Biden claims his plan would tax corporate profits at 15% to pay off a big promise. I want to add two years of free community college for everyone. And if his infrastructure plan passes, he vows workers who learn a trade at community college would have plenty of work on their hands once they graduate. We're going to make the biggest investment in roads and bridges since the construction of the interstate highway system literally creating millions of good paying jobs. As Illinois lawmakers debate the future of energy policy here, the president promoted a cleaner environment nationwide. We're gonna upgrade the electric grid to make it more resilient and ex to extreme weather and other threats. And downplayed concerns, his agenda might not fly with Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell. Look it up, man, he's bragging about it in Kentucky. If Biden can convince Republicans to adopt his agenda, he describes an economic recovery even greater than the one President Reagan engineered in the 1980s. This is going to be an American century. Reporting in Chicago, Mark Maxwell. The White House also addressed the recent surge of violence in Illinois and pledged federal resources to create a gun trafficking strike force in Chicago. We have new details. A new health clinic is on the way for the city of Decatur's employees and their families. Council members voted to use space upstairs at the library and renovate it into a clinic. It'll be run by Activate Healthcare. It'll offer primary care and pharmacy services. City council leaders estimate it'll save the city $250,000 every year. 
We're really thrilled about the downtown location of this clinic. We think the upper level of the library is a great central location that's easy to access uh, for our employees. Council members expect the clinic to open by the end of the year. It's Ayo DeSumo's first NBA workout, which team he hit the court with. Plus, this 102-year-old high school graduate expected to have her diploma sent in the mail, but her school and community had very different plans. All right, Kevin, you are looking forward to sleeping tonight, listening to some yeah. thunderstorms, maybe? Yeah, hopefully listen to some thunder, see some flash of lightning, a little rain beating down on the rooftop. No severe weather. That's the cool thing you can sleep tonight soundly as well uh, for those of us that enjoy that little thunderstorm that you don't have to worry too much about we may have a few of those tonight that's lightning showing up on our weather cameras which we're going to show you more of when we come back and the latest in the storm tracker doppler with where we have some of those storms tonight stay tuned